The Pac-12, comprised of Oregon State, USC, Utah, UCLA, Cal, Washington State, Arizona State, Stanford, and Colorado. The Pac-12 was probably my favorite conference to watch in college football this year, but will that translate to the NFL? I'd like to introduce you all to Coach Prime. Yes, I know, the similarities are shocking. Coach Prime has a dream to win a Super Bowl using only NFL players from the Pac-12. We'll be resetting the entire NFL in a fantasy draft, and any future rookies that we pick up must also be from the Pac-12. Let's start by grabbing one player from every Pac-12 team. Round one, pick 19. This is a snake draft, so we'll get a round two pick earlier. Who's the best Pac-12 player in the NFL? The best running back in the league and potential MVP is from Stanford. And I'm very glad, because I don't think Stanford has a lot more players. Christian McCaffrey is our very first pick. My second pick is going to be a young stud wide receiver, Amon St. Brown out of USC. Ranked at 30 in true value. We got him at 46. Vita Vea is a little old, but he's a superstar D tackle. He's 71 in true value. He's out of Washington. That's three Pac-12 teams down. We already have USC, but I cannot pass up on Talanoa Hufanga. He's a 90 overall 23-year-old. He's 57 in true value. He's still on the board. I love Talanoa Hufanga. I try to trade for him all the time. So we're going to double up on USC here as we head into round five. I'm going to take Jordan Poyer. This is our first reach of the draft, but we have two awesome safeties now. Obviously, one of these two guys is getting moved to free safety, but that shouldn't be an issue. Colton Miller was UCLA. I did not know that. Colton Miller is an excellent left tackle. He's 27 years old. He'll probably sit around this overall for the next four or five years, and I hope to win a Super Bowl in that timeline. So unless we really choke, that should be solid. We are doubling up on D tackles right now. Two insane D tackles on this team, something I've never done before. I wonder if potentially I move one of these guys to an edge rusher, but we're going to pick up DeForest Buckner out of Oregon. He's 29 years old. He's superstar. Maybe I run a four D lineman set with two superstar D tackles. It's not something I've ever done before, but maybe the Pac-12 was built for it. So I'm not going to lie. I thought the Pac-12 was going to be crazy difficult, but I, I forgot just how much of a powerhouse USC used to be. Obviously, USC is still pretty solid, but back when they were cheating a lot, they produced some really good players. This is a double up on Oregon, but I'm going to take Diomador Lenoir. I'm really sorry if I butchered that name. That is a tough one, but he's 23 and he's a corner. I want to pick up a young corner now so I don't get burnt later. Next up, I do need to start looking at the quarterbacks. Gardner Minshew is Washington State. Problem is Gardner Minshew is 27 years old. I don't know if Minshew's our guy, but if Minshew's not our guy, then who is our? We don't have a lot of good options. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think our best quarterback option is Tyler Huntley. His accuracies are really, really bad, but he's fast and we could play with a really unique play style if we go Tyler Huntley. I'm going to try it. <laughs> He's, he's ranked 845 in true value, and he doesn't even have a face scan. Look at this bum. Definitely didn't need to take him right now. I'm going to pick up Rashad White here. He's 24, he's star, he's 80 overall, and he's an Arizona State Sun Devil. And there's my first good pick in a while. There's only three teams we still need. That's Colorado, California, and Arizona. I have a lot of safeties, but I don't have a choice. We got to take Cam Bynum out of California. Akello Witherspoon is out of Colorado. Colorado really doesn't have a lot of players. They have Chidobi Awujie, who's probably the best player that we could get our hands on. Then they have Akello Witherspoon, and that's basically it. Arizona has equally slim options. There's Demetrius Flanagan Fowles, Nick Folk, Jalen Harris, Lucas Havershick, and Roy Lopez. Nick Folk is a kicker. Is he even still in the league? All right, Arizona, you're getting a 38-year-old kicker who's probably going to retire in a year. That's my pick, Nick Folk. I'm sorry, Arizona. That's all I had. Now that we've got every team, though, we can just pick up the best players that are available. And hey, Eric Kendricks may be old, but he's UCLA. He's 82 overall and he's star. We can pick up Marcus Peters out of Washington. This is one of the oldest teams I've ever built. Marcus Peters is 30. Got to build our offensive line as well. We really haven't touched O-line yet. We'll start with Andre James, center out of UCLA. My left guard, Isaac Sayamalo out of Oregon State. Left tackle can be Andres Pete out of Stanford. Dude, we really got to win the Super Bowl in like year three because my whole team is going to be 32 and on the brink of retirement. 
At right tackle, we can get Austin Jackson out of USC. He's 24, so this is the first halfway decent pick in a while. Honestly, a lot of good tight end options out of the Pac-12. You got Zach Ertz from Stanford. You got Mercedes Lewis, UCLA. Kate Otten is Washington. Will Disley is Washington. Pharaoh Brown is Oregon. Wow. Let's get Luke Musgrave. Luke Musgrave out of Oregon State. Damn. The Pac-12 has a shocking amount of tight ends. I like it. I think two guys we got to pick up are both Chargers. We got to try and pick up Justin Herbert, and we got to try and pick up Keenan Allen. I think this would be really helpful for this team. As much as, you know, we did draft Tyler Huntley, I don't think there's any way we can go forward with Tyler Huntley as my quarterback. We just won't win. My right end is Casey Tuhill out of Stanford. One of my outside linebackers is going to be Anthony Barr. And my other outside linebacker is Justin Hollins. Yikes. I think this team's going to be a little top heavy. We have some serious talent. Like if we get Amira, we have Christian McCaffrey, we can get Justin Herbert. We'll be great, but I'm actually kind of scared to see what the overall of this team is. Simming to the end of the draft, we've gotten a player from every single Pac-12 team, as well as some really, really solid players. And what I've noticed in these conference rebuilds is trading becomes super important because... Oftentimes, the draft does me no good. There could be an amazing player in a position I need, but if the guy played at Michigan, I can't take him. So we end up trading away a lot of our picks, and we just got to hope that those players perform well. It's, it's almost like rebuilding without the draft, but not always. Pac-12 starting lineup is an 81 overall. That's actually not bad. Taking a look at our lineup, I think offensive line is scary bad. Colton Miller, I like. Sayamalo, I like. Andre James isn't too bad either, but right guard is pitiful. I'm going to move Andres Pete to my starting right guard and my right tackle. Pitiful. Luke Musgrave is a 72 overall, but he's very young. So if we put him in the right offense, right scheme, I think we could make him good. So maybe we don't need to draft or trade for a tight end. Wide receivers right now, we got Amon St. Brown. And that's actually the only Pac-12 wide receiver we have. I do plan to trade for Keenan Allen, but I have to get a third string Pac-12 guy in here. My backfield is interesting to say the least. So we've got Christian McCaffrey and Rashad White. Rashad White was the only Sun Devil I could think of. I feel like there's a really good player in the NFL from Arizona State. I'm just not remembering. Brandon Ayuk is Arizona State. So is Jack Jones. What are we going to have to give up to get Keenan Allen, Ayuk, and Herbert, though? That's not going to be easy. Defensively, I've got some solid veterans. We've got two great D tackles. I have horrible edge rushers. We've got solid corners, and we've got really good safeties. Got to move Jordan Poyer over to free safety, though, so that we're not wasting his his talent. This is definitely an old team, though. Honestly, Brandon Ayuk is so good that I definitely want him over Keenan Allen. Let's try and get a hold of both of those guys. Let's start with Justin Herbert. That's going to be the hardest guy to treat. The Dallas Cowboys have Justin Herbert. This is going to cost an arm and a leg. Luckily, he's only an 86 overall right now. Okay, I can part ways with Rashad White because Rashad White's my backup and he's also Arizona State. I can part ways with Tyler Huntley. Those two combined are worth a sliver. It's going to definitely be some draft picks. What about a third, fourth, fifth, and sixth? We're getting closer. That is so painful how much that cost. To get Herbert to Washington, it cost us two first round picks and two second round picks. We did retain our first round pick for the upcoming draft. So hopefully it's a good one, but we also lose Rashad White. Ouch. That's all I'll say is ouch. That hurt. And honestly, as long as we're doing a Pac-12 rebuild, we might as well relocate. Let's go over to San Diego. That's actually a pretty cool spot for a Pac-12 team. I've never played as this team before. We're going to be the Pac-12 Bulls. I'm going to go with a basic sphere stadium. Why not? Let's go, baby. So the Jets have Brandon Ayuk. Good news is they have wide receiver depth, so they should hopefully part ways with him. I traded Rashad White, so I have to have an Arizona State Sun Devil. I think I'm going to trade away my first rounder for him. This is my only first round pick left, but yeah, it's going to get me Brandon Ayuk. An absolutely gigantic haul of picks, including a first-round pick. And Robert Woods gets 90 overall Brandon Ayuk to the Pac-12 Bulls. Ugh. We're basically the Rams. We said fuck them picks, and we're just going to win without them. All right, boys, here's your new look Pac-12 offense. We've got Herbert and McCaffrey in the backfield. We've got Ayuk and Amon St. Brown at wide receivers. So tons of amazing threats. We've got young Luke Musgrave at tight end. Got a solid offensive line. And defense, I think, is where things are going to get scary. It looks good on paper, but a lot of these players are older. Poyer is older. Peters is older. Vita Vea is older. Buckner, Kendricks, Barr. The young guys on this defense are Talanoa Hufanga and Diomedor Lenore. Lenoir, sorry. I don't know his name. 
but we don't have a lot of young talent and we don't have any elite edge rushers right now. I'm gonna run a 4-3 so that we have four down linemen and three backers. I think it's gotta stay like that so that we can have the two big boy D tackles always in. What I'd really like is a, a young edge rusher, but we just don't have anybody. Amon St. Bound will be my slot wide receiver. Poyer can be sub linebacker, which should hopefully let Cam Bynum get some more reps at safety. This is ugly. I'm going with the Dallas offensive playbook to get my tight end and all my wide receivers involved. And defensively, I will try Washington. They run a 4-3. They want to generate pressure with the defensive line. And honestly, Washington in real life has two great D tackles. That's what we have on this team. So it's, it's probably a good call. We'll go base 4-3 and zone run West Coast is what's recommended. I like it. All right, the Pac-12 squad is ready to go. We have like no draft picks. I've never done that before. At midseason, the Pac-12 Bulls are rocking a 2-5 and five record, and I have traded away all of our draft picks. This may be a very difficult rebuild. Let's take a look at the prospects and see if I really did miss out on anyone by trading, though. Looking at our top five guys, there's actually a Colorado right tackle, Jared Klein. This team could use a nice right tackle. I don't know if Jared Klein would have been worth it. That makes me sad to see a really good right tackle up there. There's a corner, Edward Elliott out of Washington. He's also someone I could draft. Damn. There's Callum Richardson out of Stanford, an outside linebacker who's a speed rusher. That might be a guy I actually want to target. I need an edge pressure player. So Stanford's Callum Richardson could be a good option. There's a USC right end, Marco Farrell, also a speed rusher. Another potential option for me. There's a quarterback, George Heath out of Washington State. But I've got my quarterback. There's an Oregon wide receiver, Dalton Hammond. And that's it for the first round. So there's actually, there's five decent options. Two and five record, though, is not going to cut it. We're just going to have to see what we can do with what we have. I may end up using my third, fourth, fifth, and sixth round pick to trade up for a second or maybe a low first and just nab the only guy available. We'll just have to see how this pans out. I may have dug myself in a very deep hole. Hey, wait a minute. We won the NFC East. The Eagles 7 and 10, the Giants 7 and 10, the Cowboys 5 and 12, which means we're guaranteed the poverty playoff spot at 8 and 9. That's really good for development, and I don't feel nearly as bad about trading our picks now because we're a middle of the pack pick, even if we had them. Justin Herbert had 4,000 passing yards on 36 for 6 touchdown interception. That's an excellent season. The best in the league was Bryce Young on the Saints, then Mahomes on the Rams, Pickett on the Bills, Jared Goff on the Chiefs, Russell Wilson on the Seahawks, Brock Purdy on the Bengals. But hey, Herbert, really solid season with the Bulls. How did McCaffrey do in his opening season? 1,500 yards and 17 touchdowns, five yards per carry, one fumble. That's an amazing season for him. Receiving, Amon St. Brown with 1,200 and what? My third string wide receiver was Marvin Jones, who's a Pac-12 player, and somehow Ray Ray McLeod, Clemson is sitting with a thousand yards. I must have messed something up in the depth chart. I apologize, boys. These are fraudulent stats from a non Pac 12 player. I hate myself. Ayuk had less receptions than Ray Ray, 200 less yards, but four more touchdowns. That's bizarre. And Musgrave, honestly, was a bit of a non factor. 56 receptions, 504 yards, six touchdowns. He did not do much. Wow, would you look at that? Jordan Poyer with a monster season. Four TFLs, an interception, and 117 tackles. Kendricks followed him up. We had two interceptions out of Akella Witherspoon and three interceptions out of Talanoa Hufanga. Starting to think maybe I should put Talanoa Hufanga at sub linebacker just because he's so good and will develop so well. We probably want him doing the most. And really good defensive line play. DeForest Buckner is the backup D tackle. He's D tackle two. He had 10 and a half sacks and 12 TFLs. You got 23 TFLs and six sacks for Vita Vea. Spectacular season for him. Jacob Martin with two and a half QB sacks and Lawrence Guy with one and a half. You got one out of Reggie Ragland. So my, my formation subs were obviously off but it's all pretty fixable. We got to make sure that Ayuk is a really prominent part of this offense. But before I do any of that, let's see if we make it through the playoffs. I don't like to watch these games when it feels like I'm going to lose. Yeah, that's exactly why. So we take a loss to the Falcons in the wild card, but the fact that we made it is pretty cool for this team. I'm shocked that we did. I'm going to sim us off to the off season so that we can take a look at yearly awards. And before next season starts, I'll make sure I fix the depth chart so that Ray Ray McLeod is not such an offensive powerhouse. I have noticed in the Dallas Cowboys offensive scheme, it's actually the wide receiver three who ends up getting more receptions and yards than the wide receiver two. So I got to make sure Ayuk is actually wide receiver three, and I've got to get a Pac-12 wide receiver at wide receiver two. A re of the 2023 season, the Patriots. Oh.
That's fucked up. The Patriots beat the Falcons 41 to 28. Joe Burrow, Super Bowl MVP. NFL MVP is Mahomes. George Pickens wins Offensive Player of the Year. Tyree Wilson and Rishi Rice are Offensive Defensive Rookies of the Year. Interesting season. I'm sorry, Falcons fans. I don't know why they did that to you. Now, since this is a fantasy draft, there's no significant players in free agency in year one. So we're going to head straight to the draft. Now, my very first pick in this draft is round two, pick 24. I was able to make a trade with the Miami Dolphins. It cost me my round two in 2026 and a fourth rounder in 2026. I have dug myself a difficult hole. Ooh, wait a minute. Elite acceleration, elite strength, good speed, great change of direction. He has marginal jumping, A zone coverage out of Oregon State. He's a little short. He's got sideburns and he's 22 years old. I'm taking Jonathan Bags. Oh. Okay, Jonathan Bags is normal dev. That's unfortunate, but Jonathan Bags has really good stats. I'm not going to be shocked if he's a high overall. I'm going to skip to the end of the draft. We traded a lot of our draft picks. I don't know how I'm going to get my hands on an elite edge rusher. I might have to trade for a young edge rusher from one of these teams. I don't know, man. All right, boys, let's take a look at the draft recap. This is the big... Oh, my God, he's a monster. Yes! Jonathan Bags, round two pick 24 is a 76 overall corner. CPU auto drafted me some bums. Can't use them anyway. It's no worries. Let's take a look around the whole NFL. See if there's maybe a Pac-12 guy I could trade for. Oh my God, round one pick one was an actual generational talent. I haven't seen this in a long time. Warren Montgomery, an 84 overall corner with 95 speed, 94 excel. And I'm gonna check just for the fun of it since he's not my player. Superstar X Factor. This is on normal draft classes. That's incredible. And then the rest of these players look pretty average. There is... Wow. Oh my god. This corner class is fucking stacked. Edward Elliott out of Washington. I was looking at him. That's round one pick nine. He's an 82 overall. I am wondering about that outside linebacker though. Where's that speed rushing outside linebacker from Stanford? Here's a Colorado right tackle, Klein. He's a 76 overall. Here's a Washington center, Luke Benedict. PJ Dale out of South Carolina. I'm just looking for Marco Farrell out of USC. He's a 74 overall. He's really nothing too impressive. I wonder if I could get my hands on him. Wow, Callum Richardson, the Stanford speed rushing outside linebacker, was only a 73 overall. I might be able to trade for him too. Dude, Vita Vea got superstar X Factor and low key Vita Vea did less than DeForest Buckner. What if I traded Vita Vea to get Callum Richardson and maybe somebody else? Can I get the Raiders first, second, and third, and Callum Richardson for Vita Vea? He is an X Factor now. I just fucking undersold Vita Vea. Oh my God, I thought I was getting so much. This is still really good for us. Now we go get Thibodeau. We turn Vita Vea into Callum Richardson, Kayvon Thibodeau, and a first round pick. And I still have the Raiders first round pick. And those are all Pac-12 players. Callum Richardson, Stanford, Kayvon Thibodeau, Oregon. And then we drafted a really solid corner. I'm going to put Jonathan Baggs, Oregon State, as my starting corner. Lenoir is second, and Witherspoon can be third. Marcus Peters is getting old. My sub linebacker, instead of Jordan Poyer, I'm going to make Talanoa Hufanga. My slot corner can be Cam Bynum. If not him, it can be Jonathan Baggs. Wide receivers, we do need to adjust. So let's put Ayuk at wide receiver three, and we can take Connor Weddington Stanford. Put him at wide receiver two. That's super weird, but it's the Pac-12. This is exactly why Ray Ray got a lot of reps. He's the backup slot wide receiver. I'm going to make that Ayuk. And if it's not going to be that, can I make it Musgrave? Dude, if Musgrave came in and got some reps there just to keep him juiced, that wouldn't be bad. My rush left end can be Kayvon Thibodeau. My rush right end can be the new guy, Callum Richardson. My rush D tackle is DeForest Buckner. My starting left outside linebacker will be Callum Richardson. And my starting right outside linebacker will be Kayvon Thibodeau. And Eric Kendricks retired. Ooh, Anthony Barr is going to be our starting middle linebacker. Yeesh. Okay, so we're going to need a middle linebacker. I still like what we got. We got Amonra, Ayuk, defensively DeForest Buckner, Callum Richardson, Kayvon Thibodeau. Jordan Poyer got X-Factor. Maybe we try to trade Jordan Poyer while he's worth something. Uh... This is ugly and weird, but we're simming to midseason. Let's see how this team does. Another two and five start to the season. We do hold the Raiders first round pick. I might have, dude, I might have screwed the pooch. I'm actually so mad at myself, but I think this is a redeemable rebuild. We have Justin Herbert, Christian McCaffrey, Amon Ra St. Brown, Brandon Ayuk. 
we're gonna be all right. And you know what? We're losing games, which means we're throwing a lot. I honestly could get Amonra to a 99 overall superstar X-Factor wide receiver, and I could trade him for the most gigantic haul. That might save me. All right, well, we went 6-11 and 11 in year two. Herbert, once again, is 10th in the league in passing yards. 26 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. Bit of a regression. McCaffrey had another great season, 1,300 yards and 18 touchdowns. He had three fumbles, though. Amonra, 1,100, seven touchdowns. Ayuk, 1,035 and nine. And even Connor Weddington, our Stanford guy, had 700 yards and three touchdowns. Musgrave, 583 and five touchdowns. So slightly better season for him. Defensively, Talanoa Hufanga with five interceptions. Five interceptions, four TFLs, 114 tackles. Lenore had 92 tackles, two TFLs, two interceptions. Jonathan Baggs, the rookie, with two interceptions. Nice work. Got to worry about the sack numbers, though. DeForest Buckner had seven and a half. Callum Richardson had two, which isn't great. Definitely was looking for more out of him. And where's Kayvon Thibodeau? Kayvon Thibodeau had half a sack. Why did Michael Clemens get so many more? Dude, you'd think this was my first ever rebuild. I'm struggling so bad. All right, tough season. Let's take a look at free agency. We can pick up Kyler Gordon out of Washington. He wants a pretty expensive deal, but we've got some money. He's slightly interested in the team. Let's give him a player friendly. Chris Barnes is out of UCLA. He's a 27-year-old middle linebacker. We do need linebackers on this team, and he is interested in the squad. So if we can pick him up, that'd be really nice. Hopefully, we could get a left end. It's a really weak position, but Rasheem Green is available out of USC. I guess we'll take him. He's interested in the squad, and we don't have to pay him much. So the pick we got from the Raiders was round one, pick 28. So the Raiders had a really, really good season. So this was also very unfortunate for us. I am going to take a player here. I want an edge rusher. And I honestly, I only have one option, and that's Rashad Green out of USC. He's 6'6", 289. He's a power rusher. He doesn't look too impressive, but all of his physicals are just good enough. He's got two greats in strength and acceleration, which I want both of, and then solid speed, jumping, change of direction, and agility. I don't hate him. He's got okay skills. He's got A play rec. He's got A to C power moves. So if he's got A power moves, this guy's going to be a dog. Jonathan Baggs was normal dev. Rashad Green is hidden dev. We don't know his overall, but he's got 87 strength and 85 excel, 79 speed. It's pretty fast for a power rusher. Hopefully Rashad Green can help turn this team around. Little draft recap and Rashad Green. Okay, not as high of an overall as I was hoping, but he still is hidden dev, so he's at least a star. 79 speed, 85 excel, 78 tackle, 81 hit power, 76 block shed, and 78 power moves. He's solid. Highest overall player in the class. There's two 83s. There's Joe Sims out of Virginia Tech and Jeremiah Howard out of Texas. 82, Kerry LeBlanc out of Clemson. Taylor Bowles from Oklahoma and Washington State, Nathan Swift. 81 overall wide receiver. It's like most of the rest of these guys are not Pac-12. You got an Oregon State right guard. I'm very happy with our pick. All right, here is the lineup going into season three. Amonra St. Brown's a 98 overall. Herbert's a 94. McCaffrey still looks amazing. Ayuk's a 94. And Connor Weddington is getting his reps there at wide receiver. Musgrave is up to a 78. No dev trade upgrade for Musgrave. Was kind of hoping for that, but it is what it is. Hufanga is a superstar 97. He's becoming an absolute tank on this defense. Poyer is losing overalls fast because he's very old, but at least he hasn't retired. Thibodeau is at left end. Rashad Green is at right end. Buckner at D tackle. We got Chris Barnes, PJ Jackson, and Callum Richardson as our linebackers. Jonathan Baggs, Akella Witherspoon, and Lenore at corners. Our overalls are going up, but I don't know. Let's just see how this season goes, boys. At midseason of year three, we're three and four, which is actually the best midseason record we'd have. And the NFC East is very competitive. Four and three, three and three, three and three, three and four. So I don't hate our odds. We also have a breakout wide receiver. Get Amonra St. Brown. Oh, wait a minute. So Amonra is trying to go X Factor right now. Oh, boys, look at this. Season three is our best season by far. We have a monster offense and a lackluster defense, but that's kind of what I went for. Our games against the Bears, who have an awesome defense and a not so great offense. We're 11 and six. We came out on top of the NFC East once again. Eagles, Giants, and Cowboys all middle of the pack. Hopefully this was our best statistical season so far. Let's see if that's the case. It definitely is for Justin Herbert. But 4,200 passing yards, fourth in the NFL. Oh my God, Baker Mayfield's gonna win MVP for the Chargers. Herbert came in third. 
That's pretty dope. Coach of the year is Arthur Smith. That's hilarious. Offensive player of the year is going to be Saquon Barkley. Justin Herbert got fifth there. Defensive player of the year, Kayvon Thibodeau is fifth and Buckner is sixth. They must have had awesome years. Offensive rookie of the year is going to be Taylor Bowles for the Saints. And defensive rookie of the year, did Rashad Green? Oh, no. Rashad Green. I haven't seen his stats yet, but Rashad Green came in second to Joe Sims of the Lions. That's a bummer. But good work from Rashad Green. This is a very good season for the Bulls. This Things are looking up right now. I'm a little worried about our defense aging, but we'll have to worry about that later. Herbert, 4,200 yards, 33 and 7. McCaffrey's 1,400 yards, 13 touchdowns. Another amazing season for him. Amon Ra, 1,310. I think he'll get a dev trade upgrade regardless. Ayuk, 1,109. Weddington almost hit 1,000. Our Stanford wide receiver. And Luke Musgrave, 537 and 3. Defensively, Talanoa Hufanga with a Another amazing season, 122 tackles, six TFLs, four interceptions. I knew that was the right pickup. And wow, look at the sacks. Kayvon Thibodeau, 100% getting a dev trade upgrade. 11 and a half sacks, 23 TFLs for him. DeForest Buckner with 11 and the rookie. Uh, dude, that's a really good stat line to not win defensive rookie of the year. Wow, let's get it, boys. Honestly, my corners really aren't doing anything. I'm not used to having corners be so unspectacular, but Bags had an interception. Lenore had an interception. Poyer had an interception and Witherspoon had an interception. I think we're going to have to look into getting a free safety replacement for Jordan Poyer. He's either going to retire or be like a 75 overall after the season. But right now we got the wild card and the team's looking pretty good. I'm going to advance through this. If we win it, let's check in on the divisional. Do we beat the Bears here? Damn it. I actually wanted to watch a game. We take a loss to the Bears in the wild card. No worries. This team is looking up really, really well. We actually got a weekly award in our loss. Oh my God. It was PJ Jackson, who is a rookie. This was an auto-drafted USC middle linebacker. He had 12 tackles and that gives him NFC Defensive Player of the Week. Whatever. Hopefully he got an upgrade for that. Congratulations, PJ. That's funny. I think he actually did get an upgrade for that. Yup, he did. PJ Jackson. Let's give him his upgrade. He's a pass coverage middle linebacker. Kind of looks like a savage. He gets acceleration, man coverage, and zone coverage. I apologize. He's not USC. He's UCLA. I honestly think we dodged a bullet on this rebuild by getting Rashad Green, who played really well, and moving Vita Vea. I, I think that was the right call, even if it was a little unorthodox. But now we just shore up the defense a little bit. Jordan Poyer is getting too old, and we probably are going to need some offensive line. But other than that, I really like how this team looks. Aminra, Ayuk, Herbert, McCaffrey, Musgrave. That offense looks great. You guys want to see just a bad beat? The Falcons lost again, this time to the Raiders. Oh, wait a minute. I gave Vita Vea to the Raiders, right? Damn, I turned the Raiders into a powerhouse. Mac Jones just got Super Bowl MVP. I've made some mistakes in this rebuild. Let's just call it how it is. We're past the Super Bowl, though. So if we got dev trade upgrades, we see now. Ooh, Aminra does not give dev trade. He is a 99, but Herbert did. Herbert's now a 99 overall. And keep in mind, if you guys are going to do any rebuilds or sims, abilities actually matter. In the sim, it's very important that you set good abilities. I'm going protected, hot route master. I'm going to give him gunslinger. Give him no look dead eye. Pass lead elite. Justin Herbert is an absolute monster on the Bulls right now. And I'm talking about drafting offensive line, but honestly, they look pretty good. Defensively, DeForest Buckner hits X Factor and Rashad Green is superstar. But he didn't win defensive rookie of the year, so Rashad Green must have came out of the draft a superstar. Oh my God, and he's an 84 overall. This guy had a monster season. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Rashad Green progressed spectacularly. The wild card wasn't good, but everything else, he was getting, he got a plus four upgrade in regular season week 16. Three to power moves and one to excel. Dude, he went off. I like Rashad Green a lot. That was a huge pickup. Talanoa Hufanga is now Superstar X Factor, and it looks like we're going to get one more season with Jordan Poyer. So I might as well keep him. He's still a 78 overall, and he's X Factor. In this upcoming draft, if I could get a free safety, to replace Jordan Poyer, that'd be nice. And if I can't get that, I also would take a wide receiver. Connor Weddington is a 74 overall. He's been getting almost a thousand yards a season. Probably not the guy we want there. So let's take a look at free agency first. We have 129 million available in salary cap. We have some guys that are gonna wanna get paid a bag. So I'm not gonna throw that money away like crazy. But if I can pick up a wide receiver and a free safety, then I could trade my picks, potentially. 
There's actually some decent free agents available at this point. Michael Wilson, Stanford, just like Connor Weddington, but he's already an 82 overall and he's 26 years old. I'm going to pick up Michael Wilson, hopefully giving him an aggressive offer. May or may not accept it, but we have a lot of cap space, so we got to spend it here. I'm going to pick up Taylor Rapp just in case we can't get a different safety. He's kind of old. He's normal dev, but he is 78 overall. If he decides to sign with us, which he does, that's going to be nice. We did overpay a little bit there, but that's our Jordan Poyer safety net, basically. So, shit, if we can do anything even close to what we did with Rashad Green, this will be an amazing draft. Although this is the 2026 draft, technically, I do believe I traded away these picks as well when we were picking up Justin Herbert. So that was probably a smart free agency signing anyway. I don't think I have a single draft pick here. All right, we're going to start this draft, the 2026 NFL draft. My first pick is round five, pick 24. Okay. We're going to head to the end of this draft. We'll check out the draft recap, see who is available, and uh, maybe the CPU will grab me a couple of goofballs. We'll find out. I was drafted at Chuck Stevenson, a D-tackle out of Rice. All right, let's take a look at this draft class. This was a much more tame draft class than what we've seen. Best player is an 81 overall right end, Justin Buckner. Then it's Calvin Judge out of Auburn. And I'm taking a look to see if any of these guys are Pac-12. I haven't seen a single Pac-12 yet until Gilbert Bayer, USC strong safety. Next up, wow, this was a very weak Pac-12 class. We got so lucky, actually. The fact that we trade away these picks is so beautiful. I have seen one Pac-12 player in the top 30. Here we go. Oregon middle linebacker, Tyrone Grimes. This guy was a sixth round pick, and he's in the top 20. Oh my God. Yeah, that was the draft class to dodge. Now, starting in the 2027 draft, we have our draft picks available. So if I wanted to, yes, I could trade them away or we could actually try and pick somebody up. My thought process though, is this might be the team that's ready to win it all. So maybe we make a massive trade and go ahead and grab somebody Pac-12. You know who's been a shockingly impactful team on this whole rebuild is Stanford. And there's actually a Stanford player that I'm looking to trade for right now. Paulson Adebo, a 90 overall corner. This would be an awesome addition to this team. Now I can offer Kyler Gordon, who already has some decent trade value, obviously not as good as Paulson Adebo. But let's see if they bite on Kyler Gordon and a second round pick and worse. Oh my God, let's go. I actually didn't overpay for once, guys. Somebody congratulate me. I'll offer our second and seventh. That should be enough. Okay. Paul Sinadibo, done deal. That's actually a huge trade. I didn't realize we had gotten Kyler Gordon up so well, but Paul Sinadibo becomes a bull. We get a plus seven at corner as well as abilities. That's our first abilities at the corner position. I'm excited to have them. I'm also going to make sure that my new slot corner is Paul Sinadibo just so he gets as many reps as he can. Jonathan Baggs has been really nice. He did get a dev trade upgrade as well, but wow, what a nice pickup right there. Michael Wilson did sign with us in free agency, so the wide receiver core is now Amon St. Brown, 99 overall. Mike Michael Wilson out of Stanford and Brandon Ayuk, Arizona State, who's a 96 overall. And you know what? Let's let Brandon Ayuk be the primary wide receiver this season. He's our only Arizona State guy, and Aminra St. Brown's been getting all the love. So I'm going to switch Ayuk and Aminra in the depth chart. Aminra will still have an awesome season, but he's already 99 overall. Callum Richardson, the outside linebacker, is an 81. And you know what? Why don't we take a look at this entire Bulls roster? Just top down. All right, boys, here is your Pac-12 lineup going into season four and hopefully our Super Bowl season. Amonara St. Brown is a 99. Palanoa Hufanga is a 99. Hufanga is a superstar X Factor out of USC. Amonara St. Brown superstar out of USC. So shout out to USC for both our 99s. McCaffrey, 97. Stanford, also X Factor. Herbert is Oregon, also X Factor. Ayuk is star. He actually regressed, sadly, because in that first season, I didn't do as much as I should have with him, but he's gearing up for an awesome season here, Arizona State. Paulson Adebo, also Stanford, 91 overall. Got Colton Miller out of UCLA, Thibodeau out of Oregon, with DeForest Buckner out of Oregon, Lenore out of Oregon, USC Rashad Green, Michael Wilson out of Stanford, Oregon State, Jonathan Baggs, UCLA Andre James, Austin Jackson, USC, Callum Richardson, Stanford, Washington for Taylor Rapp, Oregon State, Luke Musgraves, Barnes is UCLA, Oregon State, Oregon State, and Colorado, I didn't forget about you. We got a Kella Witherspoon. No kidding. I don't think we have any Utah players remaining on this team. I'm sorry, Utah. We've come a long way from almost tanking this rebuild, gentlemen. We're an 88 overall. Thank you to DeForest Buckner, Jordan Poyer for not retiring. <laughs> That's really what's holding this team together. All right, boys, I'm simming all the way to the playoffs. No midseason check-in. I just feel that good. I feel confident.
This is our best season by far, 13 and four. We got a buy. The Giants went 10 and seven, so they're turning into a little bit of a powerhouse. We beat the Eagles in week 18. We're rocking an 89 overall squad. We've got a 92 offense and an 89 defense. Got a few players that get some upgrades here. Hopefully an awesome statistical season. Let's go find out, boys. Maybe Justin Herbert will finally win MVP. Justin Herbert came in third previously. Looks like he's second in the league in passing yards, 4,500. 500 passing yards, second in the NFL. I'm checking yearly awards first. Dude, I honestly, in all the rebuilds I do, I rarely get MVP. Justin Herbert of the Bulls is going to get league MVP. That is so amazing. Let's check everything else. Defensive player of the year, DeForest Buckner is third. We have three players in the running too. Thibodeau is eight. Hufanga is nine. Offensive rookie of the year. That's not going to be us. Neither defensive. We didn't have any picks. Uh, best QB is Herbert. Best running back, McCaffrey is fourth there. Best wide receiver, Brandon Ayuk. Wow, we dominated. Buckner gets second in best D lineman. Wow. Amazing work, Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert may win MVP and Offensive Player of the Year, interestingly enough. 4,000... Dude, this is absolutely incredible. 42 passing touchdowns, two interceptions. Rushing McCaffrey, 1,400 yards, 17 touchdowns. He has just been so good. I'm so glad we took him first. And Ayuk just had one of the best seasons I've ever seen. 1,300 yards, 14 touchdowns. Brandon Ayuk. Amon Ra St. Brown had 1,200 yards and 10 touchdowns. Michael Wilson, 1,107. We had three receivers go above 1,000 yards. Oh my goodness. I'm really glad we picked up Michael Wilson. Musgrave had his best season by far too. Almost 600 yards and seven receiving touchdowns. Defensively, it's Hufanga again with four interceptions. He's averaging four interceptions a year. Very impressive. He has a sack as well, and our sack numbers are off the charts. Thibodeau with 12, 11 for Buckner. Rashad Green sees a regression, only getting three sacks. And Oscar Hayes, a second-year player out of Washington, getting two sacks. Hufanga with one and Callum Richardson with one. But honestly, if we're getting 23 combined between Thibodeau and Buckner, I don't really care what Rashad Green does. Wow, boys. We are big chilling. All right, gentlemen, we've got a bye in the playoffs. So let's just advance the divisional round and see who we're taking on. Our first game is against the 10 and 7 New Orleans Saints. Wow, they got Micah Parsons, 99 overall. They got Creed Humphrey, Greg Newsom, Rashawn Slater, Bryce Young, Tyler Algier. They got Taylor Bowles, that wide receiver who won Offensive Rookie of the Year. They got Jordan Davis, Carlos Devine, Devin White. Okay, they literally... Oh, here we go. Nick Denard. There's our first... Pac-12, USC. All right, I'm going to get a few reps on offense and a few reps on defense, and then I got to let my team take over for the rest of this. It's a very fair matchup. 90 overall, they got a 92 defense and an 89 offense. We got an 88 defense and a 92 offense. Let's have some fun. Our top three, Hufanga, Herbert, and McCaffrey. His top three is Micah Newsom, Bryce Young. There's the home, there's the alt, and there's the away. I like this alt, Uni. Let's rock the alt. Whoa, that happened so fast. I didn't even see it. The Saints scored, and then we turned the ball over, and they're looking like they might score again. All right, well, let's lock up on defense. We've got some of the best safeties in the league and one of the best D lines, but we have no abilities at backers, and they almost just threw an interception. Second and 10, Hufanga is the sub linebacker, so he can play linebacker here. Oh, that is bottled up. Great defense. 26 is clamping right now. Is that Paulson Adebo? It is Paulson Adebo. Hufanga! Ooh, I just barely missed the interception. And he makes a crazy catch. I'm going to try and nab the quarterback with Talanoa Hufanga here. Let's see if he can do it. Bryce Young makes an adjustment, snaps the ball. Hufanga up the middle, makes the pass. Nice play. Here we go. Run commit middle. Chris Barnes, I need you, buddy. Is this a run up the middle? No, it's a pitch. I don't think we're ready for that. Oh, but a huge tackle, PJ. Or no, that was Callum Richardson. Just made a monster play. I don't know if this is a run. Okay, it is a handoff and I'm there. He tried to jump over me and we lit him up. Chris Barnes. That was actually Nick Bowden, but regardless, a huge stop. Third and goal. One more blitz. Chris Barnes. Go! <laughs> it's a goal line stand for the Bulls. Fourth and goal. They're going to take the field goal. They're going to use as much clock as they can. I'm going to have three timeouts and 25 seconds to get down there. That'll be my first drive on offense. Probably should have just used a timeout here to not let them milk all that, but we'll see. 
Down 10-0 in the divisional after the bye. That's no good. Let's see if we can get a nice kick return to start this out, though. We'll take over at the 28 with 16 seconds. Coach wants me to just hand this ball off. You're out of your mind, coach. We got hot route master. We got some of the best wide receivers in the league. We got three timeouts. I'm gonna try my best to make something happen. There's Luke Musgrave. He's wide open and he's got room. Out of bounds. No timeout burnt. 11 seconds. That's a great play. Michael Wilson... This looks like a Tampa 2. Can we hit McCaffrey on a post, maybe? Christian McCaffrey is wide open on the post. Oh, I needed to juke him out and make something happen there. We've got four seconds. Do we take the field goal or do we take a shot? Oh, no. We probably shouldn't take a shot here, huh? It's too risky. Chase McLaughlin's going to come out and hopefully drill this. Yes, sir. Almost blocked. The San Diego Bulls. The Pac-12 Bulls. We're gonna get three points here. And now I gotta let the team take over. I just gotta let the boys play ball. On the opening drive, the Bulls are looking like they're marching down there. Chase McLaughlin just missed a 42-yard field goal. But we have the ball back. Wait a minute. All right, first and 10. Saints with their first turnover. We could potentially tie the game up. Herbert slings it to Musgrave, who got absolutely lit up. Second and 10 looks like a run play. Maybe play action. Let's see what coach is thinking. Just a... Whew. Yikes. Five rushes, five yards. It's going to be tough to win a playoff game like that. But you got to remember, we don't have a great offensive line. Third and 13. It's a big passing down here. What are you made of, San Diego? The Pac-12. Herbert slings it. Caught! Michael Wilson. The free agent signing just made a huge catch. And I need to jump forward, change of possession so I can watch all the... That was a huge play. The Bulls have a chance to make this 10 to 10. First and 10. Herbert, clean pocket. Rifle. Musgrave. End zone. Luke Musgrave is in and the Bulls are going to tie it up in the divisional. It's 10 to 10. Huge play. McLaughlin, you already missed a 42 yard. You better hit that PAT, buddy. 10 to 10. Next drive by the Saints. Third and one. They convert. They look like they're getting real close. I'm going to step in and watch now. Second and seven. The clock is winding down. I think the Saints are going to be running the ball. We've got some great defensive linemen. Oh, they're going to be passing. And that's a one-handed catch. Damn. Damn. 10 to 10 in the divisional. This is getting close. That's the two-minute warning. The good news is they can't milk the clock on us. We got three timeouts. They're first and goal. If we can hold them to a field goal here, this game's winnable. Hand off to 25. Takes it right up the... Dude, they're getting such lucky rolls on those animations. We got to stuff this. Goal line defense. It's going to be a handoff. Second and goal. They're going to let that clock go as far as they can. An obvious handoff. And once again... Pushes forward. That's a touchdown for the Saints. 38 seconds left. No timeouts for the Bulls. We're across the 50. And we're checking down in the middle of the field. Why are we checking down in the middle of the field? No huddle. That just burnt. Oh, that just burnt. 16, 17 seconds. We're going to run a play action. Who's biting on play action? Why are we running play action? It's fourth and one. This is a pit. I am mad at the Bulls right now. We got this high-powered offense. We can only put up 10 points in the divisional. And there's a laser beam interception by Justin Herbert. He makes the tackle, no pick six. But that's ball game. We're going to take a loss here to the Saints. I got to give credit to the Saints, though. Their run game was excellent. Tyler Augier averaged four yards per carry, a little more. 20 rushes. Tough loss here for the Bulls. I thought this was going to be our year, but we're going to have to regroup. Herbert with a really unimpressive game. Algier was amazing. McCaffrey was completely bagged. Michael Wilson was our best receiver. If Michael Wilson's our best receiver, we ain't going to win games. We even had an interception with PJ Jackson, and we still couldn't come out with that win. Tough luck, boys. Let's regroup for next season. All right, free agency. Bakhtiari is Colorado. We might as well grab him and put him at right tackle. We couldn't run the ball with McCaffrey to save our lives. Harrison Phillips is Stanford. We might as well pick him up. Put him right next to uh, DeForest Buckner. I'm hoping this is our year and I'm ready to sell out for it. Cody Barton is Utah. He's an 82 overall middle linebacker. I keep talking about middle linebackers. Let's pick up Barton. Big free agency. We got David. 
David Bakhtiari, Harrison Phillips, Cody Barton, and we re-signed Chris Barnes. So linebackers improved, a better backup D tackle to DeForest Buckner, and some beef on the offensive line. Also, by adding Cody Barton, we do have a Utah player again, though. So no more complaints. Dude, our corners got good. Adebo, Lenore, and Bags. That's a really nice set of three corners. Jordan Poyer has officially retired. We need to get a free safety before this draft. That or we got to draft a free safety. You know who would be a nice pickup? Marcus Williams. He's 30 years old, but he's a free safety. He's an 89 overall, and he's only star dev. I actually don't think he'll be too hard to get off of the Cowboys. I might be able to do this for a second and a third rounder, and I can even retain my first rounder. Pretty damn close. I'll give him a third rounder and a fourth rounder next year as well, and that should do it. Bingo! That's our new free safety replacing Jordan Poyer. Cost me some draft picks, uh, but I retained my first rounder, which I'm going to use in this upcoming draft. And now we've got, honestly, even better than Poyer because Poyer had regressed so poorly. Let's see who we can pick up. Not that I think whoever we pick up here is going to be super impactful, but I think it'll just be fun. Interesting. Seth Tyler is a round one projection, but he's actually a day three talent. So that guy's a bust. He is Cal though. Like technically I could have taken him. Greg Vincent. I can't take Iowa, Oklahoma. Ooh, this is what I want. Javier Weber, Arizona state wide receiver with elite speed, elite Excel. I'm drafting your ass. Oh my God. God! <laughs> Dude, if I put Buddy as slot wide receiver, that is a guaranteed offensive rookie of the year. A 97 speed, 5'8 hidden dev. This is Arizona State's Tyree Kill. All right, I'm glad we held on to that pick. Uh, next pick's fourth round. I'll let the CPU take care of it. Maybe this... Maybe it's our season, boys. I'm putting Javier Weber at wide receiver two, as well as slot wide receiver. I want this boy to get some reps. He's already a 74. Ooh, I didn't even do the draft recap. He's a 74 overall. Damn. I've never really drafted a good wide receiver. That is one of the first times I've ever drafted a hidden dead wide receiver. And the computer got me a... Oh, he's Vanderbilt. The computer got me a 74 overall corner. He is normal dead, but he's 6'3". He's Vanderbilt, though, so I can't use him. And a Utah quarterback, Casey Sulek. And a Washington outside linebacker. Not bad, CPU. I'm proud of you. Best player in the class is an 82 corner. Next best is an 81 corner. Then McCullough is a left end. And oh my God. God, it's all corners. Look at this. Top eight, seven of them are corners. I know corners start at higher overalls, but that's still really odd. Then they kind of fall off as we go throughout here. Fastest player in the class is a 99 speed, 64 overall wide receiver. Third fastest is my boy Javier Weber, but he's actually a 74 overall. I'm excited about Javier Weber out of Arizona State. Season five, boys. I thought season four was going to be our year. Sadly, it wasn't. But season five quickly approaches. Hopefully another playoff run. Let's see what we got, boys. <laughs> Look who it is, gentlemen. We get ourselves a rematch. The Saints are looking better. They're a 93 overall, but we're looking better too. 92, and we made some big moves on our defense. Hopefully, that's what'll change this game around for us. Offense looks pretty similar. And it looks like Thibodeau might have gotten a dev trade upgrade. Because I just saw ability on Thibodeau, and he was star last I checked. We got Bakhtiari at right guard, because my right tackle is actually pretty solid still. So I moved him to right guard. Ayuk's back up to superstar. Amonra, superstar. Javier Weber is an 80 overall, and he's star dev. Defensively, so Thibodeau is an X factor. I have not checked this in a while. Thibodeau's a monster. Green superstar Debo is where I thought he should be. Hufanga is still superstar X Factor. And then I'm actually going to switch some things around. So Weber doesn't need to be slot wide receiver anymore. That was just to get him offensive rookie of the year. Let's make Amonra slot wide receiver. Everything else looks exactly how it should. And we are ready for hopefully a little playoff redemption here. Herbert second in the league in passing yards. Justin Herbert back to back MVPs, baby. Let's go. Offensive player of the year in the NFC is Quinton Johnston. Defensive player of the year is Micah Parsons. Offensive rookie, Javier Weber. We kind of knew it, right? He definitely had an awesome season. 35 and one for Herbert. What an awesome season with 4,500 yards. McCaffrey continues to put up like 15 touchdowns and 1,500 yards every season. He's been amazing. Ayuk with 1,413, his best season by far. Weber barely eclipses 1,000 yards, but he does and 10 touchdowns. That's an amazing amazing rookie season. Amonro was nasty. Musgrave was nasty. And defensively, PJ Jackson really stepped it up this season. Hufanga had seven interceptions, his most ever. Adebo had six. 
one for Lenore. And it was a bit of a regression this season for sacks. We had Buckner eight and a half, seven Thibodeau, two and a half for Shot Green, but still really good seasons. Really excited for the boys right now. Let's beat the Saints. Let's go. First and 10, rematch versus the Saints. Let's start it out with a sack. Talanoa Hufanga. Ooh, I love him. Third and 16, they're gonna run it? That's a punt. Nice stop. Little play action. Nice blocking. Is Weber there? Can you make that throw? I don't know. Ooh, almost. Third and seven. I got McCaffrey, who barely catches it. Ooh, I got lucky on that one. First and ten. Oh, McCaffrey, free form, wheel route, beauty! Down to the three. First and goal. Let's go with a handoff, McCaffrey. That's just too easy. The San Diego Bulls start with a stop and a touchdown. That's all the input I could have. We just gotta hope our team holds up for the rest of it. 14 to seven on the board there. 14 to 14, 17, 14, 21, 17. And we're in the red zone. That's the two minute warning. We have a chance to put this game away and redeem ourselves. Second and three, we're handing the ball off McCaffrey. That is clogged, but McCaffrey gets third and inches. Wait a minute. This could be big. Hand off McCaffrey stuffed and we're going for it. Fourth and two, hand off McCaffrey. Somebody just missed their block, but it didn't matter. We got it anyway. And now we're in victory formation. Oh my God. McCaffrey just saved us. Dude, last year, this same game, McCaffrey was pitiful. This year, McCaffrey just closed it out for us. Second and goal. Another handoff, McCaffrey. A touchdown puts this game away. Oh, and we can. We can shoot this entire clock. This game is truly over. That's all she wrote, boys. McCaffrey, 20 for 74 and a touchdown. And we bottled all year. It was all about the run game. It was all about the running backs. Divisionals against the Rams. They have Mahomes. So I'm going to sim this one if we make it through this i feel like we would just win the super bowl 31 to 28 damn i wish i watched it now we're taking on the 10 and 7 arizona cardinals next they've got 99 overall jalen hurts we may make our super bowl this season boys all right the cardinals have jalen hurts 99 jalen johnson utah quinnon williams jonathan taylor puka nakua jackson smith and jigba that's a sick team Let's go, baby. NFC Championship, Jalen Hurts of the Cardinals. Taking on Herbert of the San Diego Bulls. That Cardinals team is nasty. 14 to 10, 21 to 10. Ooh, this is a close ball game. Do the Cardinals score here? They get a safety. Cardinals just got a safety on us, but they weren't able to score. We're in the red zone in the fourth quarter. They're using their timeouts. Herbert's gonna sling it. Caught Javier Weber, ASU legend. We're up by nine right now. And out comes Kaimi Fairbairn of UCLA to drill this field goal. 24 to 12. This is an interesting score. If we can just stop the Cardinals, here we'll come out with a dub second and 10 Jalen Hurts is gonna step up and he's gonna break that tackle he's not a 99 overall for no reason but Jalen Hurts does not have his x factor activated he has no abilities underneath him I don't know what kind of bug that is but it's certainly working in my favor he's still having a solid game 19 for 28 First and 10, Hurts slings it, caught. Dude, this game isn't over. They've got to score and get the onside though because they're out of timeouts. Second and 10, that's a handoff. Gonna take it for nine yards. Jonathan Taylor's having a really good game. It's third and two. They just don't have a lot of clock to mess with here. Hurts. Jonathan Taylor just decided not to catch that football. Oh my God. This might've been a little bailout game for the San Diego Bulls. NFC chip, Jalen Hurts did not show up. Fourth and two, slings it, caught monster hit from Cody Barton, but he hung on. There's 30 seconds left here. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Jalen Hurts, flushed out of the pocket. Ooh, I almost wanted him to catch that, keep the clock running, but Marcus Williams lays a hammer. Jalen Hurts to Jonathan Taylor, who drops it? <laughs> Dude, they're actually selling. This is such a criminal sell. 22 seconds left, third and 10. We got full momentum, slings it out of bounds. The game's over. Fourth and 10, he fumbles. That's a turnover. I don't know who forced that fumble, but we're back in victory formation. I love to see victory formation and we're headed to the Super Bowl. 12 to 24, San Diego Bulls masterclass. 16 for 23, Herbert, two touchdowns. Jalen Hurts was utter dog shit. Let's get it, baby. Talanoa Hufanga is a 99 overall in zone and run support. And now we can give him a hybrid upgrade. Agility and man coverage. Sheesh, look at this dude. Our Super Bowl is against the nine and eight Baltimore Ravens. Wow. 
Ravens have Jamar Chase, Panay Sewell, JC Horn, Najee Harris, and Vince Sheets. That's their quarterback. 99 overall. Superstar. They got Tank Dell. They got Oregon Panay Sewell. And they got USC Tuli Tupolotu. I'm honestly nowhere near as concerned about this team as the teams we just saw. So let's take one final look at the Pac-12 Super Bowl lineup. Justin Herbert, Christian McCaffrey, X-Factor Ayuk, Superstar Javier Weber out of Arizona State, Amon Ra St. Brown. Got Bakhtiari beefing up. Luke Musgrave finally gets a dev trade upgrade. Rashad Green, Buckner, Thibodeau, Hufanga, Paulson, Adebo, Marcus Williams. Yeah, this team came together nicely. It's 14 to 10. 10, 21, 10, 21, 17, 24, 21. Oh my goodness, this game is close. The San Diego Bulls are on offense. It's second and two. We're approaching the red zone. Damn. Herbert slings. Weber cannot hang on. I don't know about that throw, dude. That's our 5'8 wide receiver. I feel like he's not the guy to go to there. Third and two. Herbert drops back, slings it. Oh, dude. Herbert loves Javier Weber. Trust in him. He caught it that time. I love Javier Weber. He won Offensive Rookie of the Year, I believe. We'll check in after this game, but right now I want to win the Super Bowl. 24 21. Herbert's flushed out, slings it. What was that throw, Herbert? Amon St. Brown in the end zone. Look at this shit. Back foot, 180. Bomb. And he was wide open. Absolutely cooked the secondary. Amon Ra's in. Fairbarn for the PAT. And that's 31 to 21 in the bowl. Oh, no. 31 to 28. The Ravens score. They stop us. And they're in the red zone. We must have turned the ball over. They're definitely running this football. We got to clog this, boys. That's why we got Cody Barton. That's why we got the Forrest Buckner. It's why we got Harrison Phillips. Great defense. Defense right there. Buckner, Hufanga, two absolute studs on this team. Second and goal. Clock is ticking. Oh, this is such a big stop. That looks like the same play. Get down there, Hufanga. It's a very similar play. It's a run. Hufanga stuffs it. But Hufanga's 15 yards deep. You can't be that deep. You know they're running it. Oh, this is read option. An adjustment. What are we doing? We're overloaded on the wrong side. Oh, it's a pass over the middle. Ravens score. Oh, no. 29 seconds left. We are inside the 25 with one timeout remaining. Herbert's got his X Factor. He sits in a clean pocket. Luke Musgrave. And just like that, we're back on top. Oh, my God. No way. They have three timeouts, so they only need a field goal to tie this up. But this is not the real life Ravens. They don't have Justin Tucker. They have like a, a 400 pound kick return man. Did anybody else see that? Jamar Chase has 150 yards and two touchdowns in the Super Bowl right now. First and 10. This is the final drive, boys. Well, maybe. I guess if they get in field goal range, it's not. We need some edge pressure right now. He checks down. Michael Boner. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Second and nine. They use four seconds to get one yard. I love that. Somebody get home. Somebody get home. Somebody get home. He barely gets the ball away. There's only 11 seconds left. This is huge for us right now. They would need to get 30 plus yards on this play right here. Or I don't think they can even set up for a field goal. They check down. Pulse in a Debo. Put it away. This is their final chance. They have to get all the way across to the 41 in seven seconds and call a timeout if they want a shot here. Fourth and nine. Potentially the last play of the Super Bowl. Hucks it. A wobbler. Why? Why? What are we running? Andrew Linton, you're telling me on fourth and nine in the Super Bowl with eight seconds left, this six foot eight man got open? I've seen it all. That was the Minneapolis miracle, except no one missed a tackle. We just didn't cover deep on a Hail Mary. How do you not cover deep on a Hail Mary? Dude, what a Super Bowl though. 41 to 38, Vince Sheets with almost a perfect QBR. Five touchdowns, no interceptions. Same thing from Herbert. Five touchdowns on said This is one of the craziest Super Bowl duels I've ever seen. Obviously very upset that we lost, but dude, McCaffrey with six yards per carry. Najee with 5.3 yards per carry. Tank Dell. Ayuk had 161 yards and a touchdown. Jamar 151 and two. Andrew Linton just caught the game winner. Amon Ra had 124 and three touchdowns. This game was insane. All right, let's watch this. So how does Andrew Linton get open? They're in Hail Mary. Taylor Rapp just glitched out. He turns and then turns back. Dude, he didn't even run anything special. He ran a fucking streak. I hate Madden Sim so much. Dude, we actually had a chance to make this tackle too. Is that Jonathan Bags? 
Oh my God. I cannot believe that just happened. Dude, Justin Herbert played so unbelievably well just for the defense to choke that game away. That's sad. All right, boys, here is your final Pac-12 rebuild lineup. Honestly, Pac-12 had some nasty players, and we got really good players in the draft, too. Javier Weber, Rashad Green, we're leaving this team in good hands. But wow, what a choke. What a choke. Thibodeau, Hufanga is amazing. This was a really fun rebuild, boys. 11-6 and six in the NFC East. All right, boys, I love y'all. Thanks for watching, as always. I've got a few more conferences to do, so that'll be fun. I'll talk to you guys then. Thanks for watching, as always. Peace.